He dressed in his Arabian clothing of white linen, bought especially for this day. He put his headcloth in place and secured it with a ring made from camel's skin. Wearing his new sandals, he descended the stairs silently. The city was still sleeping. He prepared himself for sandwich and drank some hot tea from a crystal glass. Then he sat in the sun-filled doorway smoking hookah. He smoked in silence, thinking of nothing and listening to the sound of the wind that brought the scent of the desert. When he had finished his smoke, he reached into one of his pockets and sat there for a few moments regarding what he had withdrawn. It was a bundle of money, enough to buy himself a hundred and twenty sheep, a return ticket, and a license to import products from Africa into his own country. He waited patiently for the merchant to awaken and open the shop. Then the two of them went off to have some more tea. I'm leaving today, said the boy. I have the money I need to buy my sheep, and you have the money you need to go to Mecca. The old man said nothing. Will you give me your blessing, asked the boy. You have helped me. The man continued to prepare the tea, saying nothing. Then he turned to the boy. I'm proud of you, he said. You brought a new feeling into my crystal shop, but you know that I'm not going to go to Mecca, just as you know that you are not going to buy your sheep. Who told you that? the boy asked, startled. Maktub, the old man said and he gave the boy his blessings. The boy went to his room and packed his belongings. They filled three sacks. As he was leaving, he saw in the corner of the room his old shepherd's pouch. It was bunched up, and he had hardly thought of it for a long time. As he took his jacket out of the pouch, thinking to give it to someone in the street, the two stones fell on the floor, Urim and Thummim. It made the boy think of the old king, and it startled him to realise how long it had been since he had thought of him. For nearly a year he had been working incessantly, thinking only of putting aside enough money so that he could return to Spain with pride. Never stop dreaming, the old king had said to him. Follow the omens. The boy picked up Urim and Thummim, and once again had a strange sensation that the old king was nearby. He had worked hard for a year, and the omens were that it was time to go. I am going to go back to do just what I did before, the boy thought, even though the sheep didn't teach me to speak Arabic. But the sheep had taught him something even more important that there was a language in the world that everyone understood, a language the boy had used throughout the time that he was trying to improve things in the shop. It was the language of enthusiasm, of things accomplished with love and purpose, and a part of a search for some believed in and desired. Tangier was no longer a strange city, and he felt, just as he had conquered this place, he could conquer the world. When you want something, all the universe conspires to help you to achieve it, the old king had said. But the old king hadn't said anything about being robbed, or about endless desert, or about people who know what their dreams are but don't want to realise them. The old king hadn't told him that the pyramids were just a pile of stones, or that anyone could build one in his backyard, and he had forgotten to mention that. When you have enough money to buy a flock larger than the one you had before, you should buy it. The boy picked up his pouch and put it with his other things. He went down the stairs and found the merchant waiting on a foreign couple, while two other customers walked about the shop, drinking tea from crystal glasses. It was more activity than usual for this time of the morning. From where he stood, 
he saw for the first time that the old merchant's hair was very much like the hair of the old king. He remembered the smile of the candy seller on his first day in Tangier, when he had nothing to eat and nowhere to go. That smile had also been a bit like the old king's smile. It's almost as though he has been here and left his mark, he thought. And yet, none of these people has ever met the old king. Or on the other hand, he said that he always appeared to help those who were trying to realise their personal legend. He left without saying goodbye to the crystal merchant. He didn't want to cry with other people around. He was going to miss the place and all the good things he had learned. He was more confident in himself, though, and felt as though he could conquer the world. But I'm going back to the fields that I know to take care of my flock again. He said that to himself with certainty, but he was no longer happy with his decision. He had worked for an entire year to make a dream come true, and that dream, minute by minute, was becoming less important. Maybe because that wasn't really his dream. Who knows? Maybe it's better to be like the crystal merchant, never to go to Mecca, and just to go through life wanting to do so, he thought, again trying to convince himself. But as he held Urim and Thummim in his hand, they had transmitted to him the strength of will of the old king. By coincidence, or maybe it was an omen, the boy thought, he came to the bar that he had entered on his first day here. The thief wasn't there, and the owner brought him a cup of tea. I can always go back to being a shepherd, the boy thought. I learned how to care for sheep, and I haven't forgotten how that's done. But maybe I'll never have another chance to get to the pyramids in Egypt. The old man wore his breastplate of gold, and he knew about my past. He really was a king, a wise man. The hills of Andalusia were only two hours away, but there was an entire desert between him and the pyramids. Yet the boy felt that there was another way to regard his situation. He was actually two hours closer to his treasure, the fact that the two hours had stretched into an entire year didn't matter. I know why I want to get back to my flock, he thought. I understand sheep. They're no longer a problem, and they can be good friends. On the other hand, I don't know if the desert can be a friend, and it's in the desert that I have to search for my treasure. If I don't find it, I can always go home. I finally have enough money, and all the time I need. Why not? He suddenly felt tremendously happy. He could always go back to being a shepherd. He could always become a crystal salesman again. Maybe the world had other hidden treasures, but he had a dream, and he had met with a king. That doesn't happen to just anyone. He was planning as he left the bar. He had remembered that one of the crystal merchant's suppliers transported his crystal by means of caravans that cross the desert. He held Urim and Thummim in his hand. Because of those two stones, he was once again on the way to his treasure. I am always nearby when someone wants to realise their personal legend the old king had told him. What could it cost to go over to the supplier's warehouse and find out if the pyramids were actually that far away?'